Well, Stephen, I mean, that is a problem. <laughs> I mean, you know, you and I are old, old enough and ugly enough to remember when the ABC, particularly ABC Melbourne, uh, was a high-rating radio station. They've lost huge numbers from, uh, from the local Melbourne ABC. And th they make strange decisions. I mean, the, the two shows, breakfast shows in Sydney and Melbourne on, on local radio are, are hosted by comedians. No, look, I think uh, the incessant attacks by uh, the Liberal Party and, uh, and you know, Michael would be at front and centre and proud uh, to be front and centre of those campaigns uh, have actually meant that the, uh, you know, they've had these editorial guidelines. You can't have an opinion, you can't express an opinion. So they try and hide behind comedians uh, who can say, oh, we were just joking, uh, rather than actually attempting to present and analyse news. Uh, so I think the amount of news and the shows that are being reduced, even the drum, and, and let me assure you, I am a massive critic of the drum. I mean, I disagree with Michael uh, on the basis that the left wing of the Liberal Party run the ABC, along with the Greens. It's not a pro-Labor organisation. Uh, and when they announced they were cancelling the drum, I texted a friend of mine who works there and said, how will the left wing of the Liberal Party in New South Wales talk to each other if they can't go on the drum? That's a bit rich. Now, mm. uh, Michael, I mentioned at the start of the program, it seems that the uh, <laughs> no, union movement, the AWU, uh, ha have uh, suddenly worked out uh, that there's not going to be a lot of jobs out of this new green energy projects mm. where we import every everything from, uh, you know, the blades to the, the wind towers to the solar panels. And so the AWU have now gone, well, hang on, uh, where are our jobs going to be? Yeah, well... There's a fascinating article in the Australian this morning, if people didn't read it. Um, Keith Pitt, the uh, National Party MP, did a survey uh, of <laughs> the eight biggest new projects. $24 billion, $24 billion for these eight projects. 170 permanent jobs. 170. So Chris Bowen's saying there are 600,000 jobs in the renewable sector. I mean, I hope Chris is right, but he's been wrong about almost everything during his career. Let's get Chris... Come on the show and give us a list of where those 600,000 jobs are coming from. This seems to be fanciful and the AWU a little bit slow, but they seem to be waking up to this, Steve. Stephen Conroy, that is obviously going to be a concern for, for the Albanese Labor government if no, look, the I unions are going to turn on them on the, the lack of jobs. No. no, but to, to be fair, I think that's been an issue for a number of years. And I've heard Albanese talk about wanting to be a producer of, you know, some of these renewable sectors, particularly some of the components in the renewable sectors. He's talked about wanting to be a battery uh, manufacturer here in Australia. So I think the government have said the right things, but where I think you're seeing is as, as their policies are driving more and more projects to, to get onto the uh, uh, yeah, building phase, the criticism that, you know, all of this is taking place offshore. I mean, I think there's one solar uh, panel manufacturer in Australia at the moment. I mean, this is our technology. Australia developed this technology. We should be exploiting it. We are a natural place for there to be, you know, solar. Well, why is the government not getting on and doing it in then? In the world. No, well, I, I think it's a fair criticism of the unions to say, OK, we've got all these projects on the go, we're behind you on the renewable target, now let's start seeing some actual production in Australia. It's one of the reasons the National Reconstruction Fund's been set up. It's, it's always hard to push Not these for 18 months. We going. can't even make uh, a, I, a windmill. Yeah. No, look... No, look, let, let's be clear, Steve. The, the world doesn't work that simply in terms of legislation passing Parliament to establish these funds. I wish it did. I myself went through, you know, a couple of years trying to drive and I was, you know, solely focused on driving the rollout of the National Broadband Network, which did create and still creates jobs on a massive scale in Australia. But it actually takes, whether it's bureaucratic resistance, whether it's legislative slowdown, you know, there's a whole variety of factors and it takes focus and determination. And I think the government uh, should take heed of what the unions are saying to start driving this agenda. I know Ed Jusic will be on this. Uh, he's been championing these sorts of issues for years. Michael, uh, I note uh, Woolworths have done a survey of their customers. 40% of their customers predict uh, their families are going to be worse off financially next year. Mm. 
that's a real worry for the government, but it's more of a worry for the poor people who can't afford to buy it's, groceries. It's, it's terrible. Uh, it's terrible. And I think things are going to get worse next year um, because people cannot afford... If you look at household savings ratio, it's plummeted. All the money they stacked away during, during, during the pandemic, gone. Uh, at the core of Albanese's problem, by the way, people haven't worked this out yet, at the core of Albanese's loss of support is the fact that before the election, he said to people, the subliminal message was, life is meant to be easy. You know, he twisted Malcolm's word. He said, life is meant to be easy. It's Morrison and Frydenberg and those Liberals' uh, uh, cost of living crisis. Jim Chalmers and I will fix all of this. He led people to believe that it would be easy to fix cost of living yeah. issues, and now people worked out they were lied to, Steve. They were lied to. Michael Kroger and Stephen Conroy, thank you very much for your time.